right, the calculus students, section 10.5 for the ratio test. And this is the most important test. Um, just a summary of what you did in 10.4. The um, the integral test, well, the divergence test is pretty simple. You know, if the terms aren't going to zero, then you've got no chance to converge. Um, the integral test, you're probably never really going to use the integral test because the integral test is really just a way of justifying what we know about p-series. Once you know about p-series, you really typically don't have to use the integral test, although, like, the integral test is how you prove what we know about p-series. So that's pretty easy. And then limit comparison Basically, things that look like they might behave like some p-series actually do behave like those. So that's all pretty easy. This is the one that involves a little bit more algebra, and it's the one that's going to be um, of great importance and of great utility to us later on in, oh, I'd say sections is it maybe 10, 9, I think. Um, and certainly you'll be asked um, a few times on the AP test to... Uh, to use this test to determine, um, well, you might not be asked, but you will be asked to determine convergence, and this is the test that you would uh, be using. So, what is it? The ratio test says that um, if we have a series. And again, I'm going to start it with 1, but it doesn't have to start at 1. It'll start anywhere. Uh, from n equals 1 to infinity, of uh, whatever the terms are. Uh, then if the limit as n approaches infinity of the n plus 1 term over the n term. In other words, the next term in the series divided by the series before it. If this limit, and I'm going to say the, um, are we going to go into, I'm trying to think if I want to do it with alternating ones or not. Let's just say here, I guess we'll just do with, um, this is with like all positive terms or all negative terms. We'll talk about alternating ones in the next section. So, um, but it's just going to be a matter of throwing absolute value signs around this. So, if this limit is less than 1, and since the terms are all positive or all negative, it can't be negative. So that means like between 0 and 1. Then the original series converges. If this limit of the, it's the one term divided by the term before it, right? That's what this, that's what this is. If it's equal to one, then the test is inconclusive. And you have to try something else. And that's not really going to happen to us a whole lot except for having to check endpoints where it's equal to 1. And we'll check that just by looking at what the series is for those boundary values. Um, more about that later. Um, so it's worth talking about this a little bit and thinking about um, what this says and why this is true. Um, and then we'll see how to actually put it into practice. So think about a geometric series. Here's a geometric series. Um, how about, let's see. 1 plus 2 thirds plus 4 ninths plus 8 twenty sevenths, and so on. Well, what's the multiplier here? The geometric series is one where you're multiplying by the same thing every time. The multiplier here, which we usually call the R, 
is equal to 2 thirds, right? To get from one term to the next, we're multiplying by 2 thirds. Now, a um, long time ago when I used to teach, oh, I guess Algebra 2, maybe, we taught this in. Um, some students, sometimes, um, you, you are pretty good with numbers, so you can probably just look at this and see that the multiplier is two-thirds. But if you have students that have a hard time seeing that, you can always give them a little trick. You can say, well, if you can't see what the multiplier is, if it's escaping you, then take one term in the series and divide it by the term right before it. Now, of course, a fraction divided by a fraction, that's dividing by a fraction, is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. That gives me two-thirds. Two-thirds. And notice, whatever two terms you use, if you take a term and divide by the term before it in a geometric series, you're always going to get two-thirds. Right? Now, this is the basis of the ratio test. We're taking a term in the series, in dividing by the term before it, right? But these things we're going to be looking at are not geometric series. There are other crazy looking series that often have um, exponentials in them, factorials in them, all sorts of crazy stuff. But what we're trying to determine here with the ratio test is, as n goes to infinity, is this approaching something? In other words, as we go further and further out in the series, is it starting to behave like a geometric series? Is it having a multiplier that's less than 1? And if it is approaching something that's less than 1, including it could be approaching 0, that's just fine too, then um, that means it's starting to act more and more like a geometric series. Although the multiplier might not ever be, say, 2 thirds, if it's approaching something like 2 thirds, then it's approaching the behavior of a geometric series, which means as long as the multiplier is less than 1, it has convergence. Um, or it will converge. That's worth really thinking about. Um, and I don't know, you might want to review that, that part of the notes a few times. The mechanics of how to do it um, are you know, fairly straightforward once you get into the, the, um, the pattern of how to set things up. But it's really, really important that you understand what we're really doing is we're testing to see if a series eventually behaves like a geometric series. Because if the limit of a term divided by the term before it, if that ratio is actually approaching a number, like a multiplier, and that number is less than 1, that means it's starting to behave more and more like a geometric series, and that means it will converge. Okay? So, what does that look like? Let's do some examples. Um, Let's try this. Let's try that. Um, does this converge? So we will use the ratio test. You know you're going to use the ratio test. Well, I mean, it's going to be our number one test, but the real tip-off, just in case you're not sure, is if a series has factorials in it, or exponentials like n's as exponents. That's a big hint that you're going to be using the ratio test. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find the limit as n approaches infinity of the n plus 1 term over the n term. Well, the n plus 1 term would be 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Right? I'm plugging in an n plus 1 everywhere where I, see an, where I see an n here over the n term. And the n term is just whatever is right there. And then, um, then we do algebra and simplify this. That's equal to dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, now what? Now, um, you've probably done this somewhere in your mathematical career before, but um, it turns out canceling out with factorials is really easy to do because what does n factorial mean? Well, n factorial means n times 
n minus 1 times n minus 2, yada, yada, yada. Uh, oops, sorry, that's too many yadas. Yada, 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 all the way down to, until you get down to 1. That's what n factorial means. And n plus 1 factorial means n plus 1 times 1 less than that, which would be n times n minus 1, yada, 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 all the way down to 1. All right? And look at what happens since it's all multiplication. All of these, n and all the way down, cancel also all of those. So that's just equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n plus 1. And as n approaches infinity, 1 over n plus 1 approaches 0. So what does that mean? Test says if that limit is less than 1 and 0 is less than 1, then the series converges. So the series converges. What does it converge to? Who knows? Actually, I know what that one converges to. You wouldn't even believe me if I told you. You really want to know? You think you can handle it? No, I'll tell you later. You'll learn about it later. It converges to something rather surprising. Um, but we don't know that yet. So let's do another example. How about n equals 1 to infinity? Um, k, or n, sorry, n to the n, or n factorial. Sometimes in our book and uh, maybe on the AP test, you might, they might use k instead of n. Um, but no matter, we could handle that. So we see that we have exponentials and factorials, so let's do the ratio test. And find the limit as n approaches infinity. I've, I mean, th this one, I guess, was kind of obvious that that was going to converge, or maybe it was obvious to you, maybe not, I'm not sure, but these are um, fractions that are getting small. Those are approaching zero pretty quick because factorials grow very quickly. So maybe it was... Uh, maybe you thought there was an awfully good chance that, that was going to converge. This one, eh, that's a lot harder to tell. Um, so we do the n plus 1 term, which is n plus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Right? I'm plugging in an n plus 1 everywhere where I see an n over the nth term, which is just this. And... Um, after you do a few of these, you might just automatically start writing it like this with the next one flipped over. That's up to you how comfortable you get. In other words, you might automatically say, well, hey, look, I know I'm going to be dividing by a fraction, so let's just jump right to the multiplying by the reciprocal stage of that. All right, and that's equal to... Just like above, the n factorial, n plus 1 factorial cancels, leaving an n plus 1 on the bottom, just like it did in the last example. And then here, this is a little bit trickier, I've got n to the n over n plus 1 to the n plus 1. Well, there's a little more canceling I can do, right? Because here, there, here's an n plus 1, right? And there's n plus 1 of them being multiplied together. So if I cancel this n plus 1 out, that's going to take out that one extra one there, right? Oops, and I got lazy there. I didn't write my limit in there. I should have. Limit as n approaches infinity. Uh, now I've got n plus 1 to the n over n to the n, <clears throat> and that's still tricky enough. Um, you might notice that these two things are being raised to the same power, so I could write that as n plus 1 over n to the n, and then as n approaches infinity, n over n, that's the same as 1 plus
plus 1 over n to the n. And now, um, well, good news and bad news, I suppose. The, uh, this might be something that you recognize here. If it's not, this is a pretty nasty L'Hopital's rule problem. It's one of the ones where you have to take the natural log of both sides and go and do all that stuff. And I'm not going to go through all that work because um, I want to do a few more examples. But you might remember this is the pre-calculus definition of E. This is like the interest compounded um, infinitely many times. That's equal to E. And uh, what does that mean? Well, for it to converge, that limit has to be less than 1. So what we just discovered is, indeed, this series does end up behaving like a geometric series. But it gets more and more like a geometric series where the multiplier is E. And that is not going to converge, because geometric series only converge when the multiplier is less than 1. So this diverges. And um, if you're thinking, wow, that was a lot harder than the first one, I agree. And most of them are not going to be uh, that tricky. That was tricky because of the, um, what you had to recognize in the end, this limit here. So that's, I'd say, atypically difficult here. Let's try, um, try one more. How about this one? We'll go from k equals 3 to infinity. I'll use k just so we can see what that looks like. You've seen the letter k before, right? Looks like that. Um, 4 to the k. If you're awfully fond of the letter n, you could rewrite it with n's, I suppose. Um, so, use the ratio test. Again, there's factorials and k's as exponents. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take the shortcut this time. k approaches infinity. Uh, notice that where we started doesn't matter at all. That's not going to play into the ratio test at all. It doesn't matter where we start. Um, so I'm going to do the k plus 1 term. That's, I'm going to be careful here, 2 times k plus 1 factorial, right? Um, the whole k has to be, the 2 is going to multiply the whole k plus 1 over 4 to the k plus 1, and then I'm going to divide by the original. That's the same as doing that, right? Multiplying by the reciprocal. And then I'm going to do some canceling. This is 2k plus 2, okay? So 2k plus 2 factorial is 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 1 times 2k times 2k minus 1, etc., etc. And 2k is 2k times 2k minus 1. So notice here that because of that 2, all these cancel out. But there's actually two terms left in the factorial here. So that's equal to the limit as k approaches infinity of 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 1 all over... 4 to the k plus 1 over 4 to the k. Well, this, all of the k's, uh, sorry, all the 4's cancel out except the one extra one here. That's over 4. And as k approaches infinity, this is a k squared on the top, just over 4. So that's going to infinity. No chance of convergence there. That diverges. And that is what the ratio test is like. And you should get very familiar with that because it is a very important. That is going to be our number one most important test. The other tests, we really don't do anything. Like the P-series test, you just kind of recognize something. This is the one that really involves doing some algebra.